All right, it is Thursday, February 22nd, one day before my dad's birthday, and today is my friend Brian's mom's birthday. So just to keep note of that at home. Happy uh, birthday to them, or? Brian's yeah, happy mom? birthday to them. You like Brian's mom? Yeah, yeah. And I like my dad, too. Would you, in a, a fit of drunken rage or passion, maybe, mm. No. Have a, a dalliance with with her, my Mr. dad. Bryant. No, no. Not. What if you were younger? Like, what if you were her age? Would she had been attracted. Uh, to you know that she's a nice lady and happy birthday. What if your mom? Today's had, rundown is your mom had passed, and yeah. and uh, your dad was really lonely, and Brian's mom was single. Would you set today's them up? rundown is Brian's mom? They have, they have similar birthdays. It's a, good, it's a fair question. You have to answer the question. No, I think that'd be weird. Why? You could be and brothers Brian with Brian. Would be, yeah, step literally this the movie Step Brothers. He has a wife. I'm saying maybe she's dead too. And this, and this. So then, me and both Brian, and, both and me and Brian end up together. No. Oh. No. Brian's Not that I want. mom and your dad are single. Right. Would you set them up? No, no. Why? They can find other people. So it's not even happy birthday to them. No, Go that, fuck yourselves. Bullshit. Find you're other so, people. You're a selfish fuck. Your dad's lonely. They, I wouldn't right. need to set them up. They know each other. But yeah, sometimes I, you need that extra, you know, a little yeah. extra coaxing. You put a little uh, you fucking mango RX. They, they, they can drinks. find other people. It's a big world out there, Clemmer. You're a shithead. Yeah, you just don't want them to find love. Selfish You're just anti-love. And today's rundown is brought to you by Land of Bad. Land of Bad is a heart-pounding, action-packed film that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Action Reloaded said, buckle up for Land of Bad. It is a pulse-pounding thriller. The film captures a mission that goes awry, and Liam Hensworth plays a young JTAC airman who has to rely on drone pilot played by Russell Crowe who is his eyes in the sky. The film shows the close-knit brotherhood that develops between the shoulders. Uh, soldiers, the mantra of leave no one behind is deep-rooted in all that serve, whether you're on the combat field or doing your job from a computer screen. Land of Bad is the first time brothers Luke and Liam Hemsworth have worked together on the big screen. Land of Bad now playing in theaters. That sounds like a great movie to go see in theaters. Russell Crowe. Uh, Oscar Liam winner? Hemsworth. I noticed you said uh, shoulders instead of soldiers. Yeah. Are you thinking about your own fitness journey? <laughs> no, I, that honestly was probably in my head. Yeah, but no, soldiers. They're soldiers. Give us a shoulder flex. They're yeah. not. Look, just to be clear, I'm going to the gym again. I'm only losing fat tell. and getting toned. I'm not getting strong. I'm not allowed to get strong. Dave said I look gross strong, so I'm not getting jacked. I'm not building muscle. I'm not going to have the SpongeBob arms. I'm doing more of a full body. It's healthy. I wake up at 7 a.m. I go to the gym. I feel awake. I get that morning sunlight in the eyes, as Andrew Huberman says you're supposed to get. I come home. I have some hard boiled eggs, some blueberries. Are you blueberries. talking about Hub says that? Why do you listen to Hub? What's Glenny looking at? Is Glenny looking at us? Oh, what are you um, seeing, Glenny? What do you see? Yeah, what's going on, Glenny? You're staring right. You're staring right at us. And Tommy? You you didn't know who I was? Oh, Roan. Oh, Roan. I just said you the So Glenny didn't know who Roan was. Fuck. Dana, I said it's Oh no. That might be a shot. <laughs> at, am I Dana Beers? You must be gaining a lot of weight. I am gaining weight. That's a shot at you. It is. Not, are you are you insinuating he doesn't come to the office enough? Is that what you're insinuating? That's a that's a shot at you, Roan. Are you insinuating Rome doesn't come to the office? You don't recognize him. It's either that I'm fat or that I don't come to yeah. the office. Oh, yeah. Which would you rather? His face was turned to the right. His face was turned to the right. I just didn't know who it are was. You saying that I'm, that are, are you saying I'm fat or I don't come to the office enough? I, you come not come to the office and not cross my mind one time. For so the I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your head was like this. I didn't tell. Who, I couldn't tell who it was. Right. Well, hey, I'm sorry. I just, you, your face was turned. I just know. Why who. are you sorry? Now that's an insult to Dana. That's saying comparing me to Dana. That's not is, nice. Is, is Dana's a nice kid. record, I was literally. We, I literally did a video with Dana yesterday, and you know what he said? I've lost 25 pounds the last couple of months. So it's not like a. It's not a fat guy. I just couldn't tell. What your face? No, Dana's very handsome. Yeah, yeah. Dana looks good. All right. Yeah. Dana's He's Egyptian. Handsome. You can apologize to me too. That's. I'm also the heaviest I've ever been. But I'm getting up at seven too. Good. Tom. Have you been? Yeah, I got up morning routine look like uh get up at seven take dog out to shit uh take protein go to gym do cardio lift weights do mobility look at us I'm like an hour look and a half us. in there look at us <laughs> um clever what's your morning look like i get up yeah. i i walk my dog sometimes or my what wife time? what time you didn't give us a time uh 7 30 okay guess. Well, Clemmer also, we had this discussion recently. Clemmer goes to bed at like 2 a.m. Yeah, I go to bed doesn't go to bed get between any 2 and 3. I and he up. takes an insane amount of weed and alcohol every night. Yeah. And he sleeps not, upside no, down. No, not an insane amount of alcohol. No, I have like a, I have a he cider has like, or two. He has two ciders and a 25 milligram weed gummy every night. That's true. And he sleeps upside down hanging in a closet. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I scared the neighbors. Yeah, it's nice. Yes. No, I, 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 it's hard for me to get to sleep. Um, so I have to like... Kind of medicate Spend yourself, yeah. Yes. It's, I, I, it's, I'm always like awake. It's hard for me to get to sleep. Yeah, totally. Most people, yeah. 
That's a good thing. You're high. You have high energy. But yeah, yeah. Or, to a fault, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. Because then, because then it's hard for me to go to sleep. But then it's hard for me to get up. I also sleep. But then, are you soundly. tired when you wake up in the morning? Exhausted. Because I'm sleeping so soundly, I'm exhausted. I don't get up to pee. I don't get up at all during the night. Oh, I get up to pee quite a few times. Yeah. So my five hours are a hard five. And here's another issue I've been dealing with. In my small bedroom in the West Village, I have one window, and across from it is the other building, and it's very close. There's like a very small alley. And I think it might be this apartment's bathroom, and they've been leaving the light on in there a lot. And like last night, it was on the whole night. I can't. I was like, why can't these fucking people shut their light? And I have a a, a, a shade, but I guess it's not that good. So I need, might need to get another room darkening shade. Or these people need to shut it's their. This is this is like the beginning of a rom com. You're gonna fall in love with this girl. I don't know that it's a or girl. It's like I can't even see like into the rear thing. window or something. You're gonna solve oh. a crime or some shit. I think it's a, no. I, I literally. Or just can't watching see. people go to the bathroom. I do worry if they could see me yeah. masturbate from bed, but I don't think so because I can't see them. Yeah. yeah, I'm worried about your pineal gland, the 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 gland that helps you with your sleep. Yeah, it's like a small gland in your brain, and I'm worried about yeah. your. Uh, like uh, your your bladder and your colorectal health, or your uh, what's my colorectal health? Your uh, or your, not not I guess colorectal is your asshole. What's the one your uh, your prostate? Yeah, I'm worried about has, prostate. Yes, you're going. I, I should go back to the urologist. If you're I've been this there. young and you're getting up that many times a yeah. night to pee, I'm He's worried about time. your prostate health. I I should get it checked again. I should. It's not my gland, by the way. Your pineal gland? This is, this is gonna be people are gonna be oh this is so dark whatever. My dad died when I was young, and I feel like if I go to sleep, I'm missing out on life. Okay. Next. No, we can talk. You can talk about. <laughs> yeah, no. We I, well, also, like, here. like I, and I get, you know, I get that, I get that mindset. But there, I'm sure there's a lot of people who feel that way. But they just, there's a they just have to fall. They just get tired and they fall. Maybe. Asleep. Yeah. No. I like. I understand. Every time I go to sleep, I feel like I'm, qu I'm quitting or I'm giving up. No. I, I, I think. But like, do you feel that. tired at 1 a.m. and you keep pushing? Um, no, but like two, sometimes I'll push to 250. You know what I mean? Right, like, but like you're, the point is you're not like going out of your way to stay up. No, you're like no, not no, tired. No, which but is, I also I think, don't go to bed. I think a normal person would be like, all right, it's 11.30. I'm going to try to make myself go to sleep. Yeah, I won't fair. do that. There's like, it's not FOMO. It's like, it's like you're, it's, it's something about you're like trying to like steal time or something Yeah, like it's a lot, a lot has to do with time. But there's like a word for it. There's, it's like a condition or it's not, I don't My point is that it's not unique to you. It's part of the human Oh, I'm condition. sure. I'm older than my dad ever was. And that's like such a mind fuck. It's such a flex. Yeah. It's not a flex. It's like a, it's a sad statement, no, I'm I guess. Joking, I'm joking. Yeah. But no, but, or maybe it is a flex if I was really old. So what is it called? Oh, kleptomania? No, no, no. No, 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 no. I don't steal <laughs> things. That's stealing things, isn't it? Stealing isn't time. kleptomania yeah, stealing, stealing small items? Yeah. That's what uh, the girl from uh, Breaking Bad had, right? Winona Ryder had it too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bitch. No, no, no. no I can't handle Why? it. Why? Winona Ryder is great. All timer. Uh, 90s? Yeah, 90s. It's insane. 90s. Let's get into the rundown, shall we? Small mouth. She had a small mouth historically. Think so. My friend Brian has a small mouth to and tie it all together. <laughs> to tie it all together. How about his mom? Uh, I'm not sure. Normal size. But when him and him and Liam would fight in the cafeteria and they'd go back at each other and be like, you walk your dog too much. You have a small mouth. <laughs> like, you're like. It, terrible insults. I, they were terrible insults. <laughs> That was kind of. Is that what your battle rap battles are like? Yeah, yeah we've been more on racism and homophobia. <laughs> walk in the dog. Walk in the dog. Walk in the dog. <laughs> Classic. Um, cell phone service is down across the U.S. today. A number of people in the U.S., mostly with AT and T, have their cell service down. Everyone's phone says SOS. Some people can't text; they can only use it if they're on Wi-Fi. No, Marty's dealing with it. Uh, nobody knows why it's happening. Uh, new station reporting could be due to a solar flare. Look. Uh, some people's service is starting to come back. As a guy that has been for months on the record as saying, I'm very petrified that the power grid is going to go down this year. It's an election year. They like to they like to have something funky, funky happen in an election year. Trump's up big in the polls. They're not going to let him just waltz to a second term. They're going to do something to mess with the world and the way that it is. I think shutting down the power grid, which our enemies have access to very easily. We have the least secure power grids of any first world country. Says who? Yeah, I see Jack Mack nodding his head over there. Says uh, who? Who's, say, who's saying that? Uh, uh, ABC World News, everybody. Well, they didn't say that. They, they, ABC they News, David Muir, if you trust David Muir, he has a report about, like, yeah, sure, did I see this but first by David Muir? No, I saw it on some of the outside edges of TikTok, but then all of a sudden ABC New, uh, News World Report, oh, we have one of the least, like, we're concerned because our enemies, there's a device, you talked about this, the device that can literally yes. shut off, elect, kill electronic devices for good. in an area for You're good. You're talking about Ocean's 11 too. You're talking about Ocean's 12, a pinch. When Don Cheadle does a pinch in Las Vegas and it turns out all the- I've seen the movie, I don't remember. Yeah, this is this is different. This is this is real. There is no, like- uh, Yeah, this is real. Yeah, you, is real? No, 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 this is real. Oh. 
uh, no, there is a, a, a weapon that can destroy electronics for, for good. So it's, I don't know if it's going to be our enemies, maybe it's China, maybe it's Russia, that they, they do it to us. Maybe our own government does it, the deep state, because they want to interfere with the election and the power grid goes down. I am petrified the power grid is going to go down this year. And I'm not, and people are like, oh, you, I'm seeing all these TikToks, you got to prepare. There's like this uh, solar power device or get this food. If the power goes down, that's it's curtains for me. I don't even know if I'd make much of an attempt. Like what, what could I possibly do? Yeah, what floor? Because there'd be no, there'd be no running water. No elevator. There'd be no electricity. Well, you probably, I, I, you I don't have. Just go an back elevator. to your, you go to Long Island with your parents. How do I Free get state. there? I would probably get a city bike. True. Go, go, yeah. but like city bike. You can't do oh, a city how bike. How can you get a city no electronic. bike? Electronic. They wouldn't work. You have to get a real bike. Don't city bikes have real bikes? No. No, but they, no, they're but they're, uh, they're attached yeah. to an electric system that's attached bikes. to your phone. Yeah, you can't. You have to do a real bike. Oh, be a lot. Where do I get a real bike? Yeah. It'd be in high demand. All right, maybe I would just walk home. Take a few days. Yeah. Where'd you set up camps? Uh, but then, like, I go to my parents. They're not fucking outdoorsmen. Like, like, well, I guess I house. die with uh, them. You have a, at least of... a yard. Yeah, you, you... <laughs> like, I, like very small. You fare yeah, much better there in an apartment than I mean, a house in an apartment though. I uh, agreed, and maybe we have a generator or something. I don't know. Get a garden. But... Get a start a community garden. But then the thing is, like, if the power grid goes down, like, do I immediately start heading home? Yes. Like, because because some people will be like, oh, it's going to come back within a few hours. It's temporary shutdown. Uh, today could have been a test. Today was probably a test. Can we shut down a little bit with AT and T? And yeah, they can. I mean, Marty was in shambles. Yeah, and he still had Wi Fi. When the power grid goes yeah. down, there's no Wi Fi. There's no running water. There's no electricity. You aren't going to be able to turn like COVID. You're able to turn on the news. Or look at Twitter. Here's the news. You're not going to be able to do any of that. There's going to be no internet. No, no nothing. No communication with anybody but the people right in your fucking face. And that's this, horrifying. This is just a, a sign of how uh, fakely old you are. It's such like an old person thing to like no. worry about like i'm not about to be fucking worrying about some shit like this, this that isn't going to happen leave like the, the world behind like the power grid is just produced like, by the obamas new netflix yes movie? yes all I'm, about I'm this aware, i, I also watch dave's show today no tommy's been saying it for a while tommy's been saying yeah it for no, no no i've fairness, been saying this for I, well, you're acting like the power grid is just like a lever that you could just be like there, there are devices that can can kill and new york guess what buddy would probably be hit one first no <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you, but you're also you have like a, a like a tinge of being a hypochondriac, like for sure. have, you like Stay love to time. worry about things. It's yeah. like the fuel that keeps your fire going. I, I wish I didn't have to worry about this. I think it's something. But here now, here's why I will say here's counter argument is that if this was going to happen, it wouldn't be so clear. The Obamas wouldn't produce a movie about it. We wouldn't have like a test today. Like they like it would just hit us. Like there's too many people right now all over the internet, all over TikTok, everywhere talking about power. If you go on TikTok, I I'll watch hours of power grid shutdown videos. Uh, too many people are talking about it. We're like it. I think it's too much. Like it's too out there. Like so now they're, they're they got us looking here. They got us with the left hook. They're going to hit us with the right. I will say the read the word behind the argument is stupid because it was a book that I read before the Obama. Like it was already a story that's been out there for a couple of years. It's a good book, by the way. Okay. Better well, book what than does that movie. have to do with that? Well, the Obamas didn't create... You make it sound like the Obamas created this they idea. They produced the movie. The no, movie that was based on a book that's three idea. years old. I'm using the... Argu I'm, I'm arguing that, like, they wouldn't be... If, if this was really going to happen, they wouldn't produce that movie. Okay. This makes me want to, like, get in the market of selling MREs and... Uh, like escape capsules. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting some shelters. food. I just know I don't want to get them. I want to sell them to idiots like you who are like, oh my god, I need to fucking get a bomb shelter for my apartment. I'm just saying it's something there. I'm just. If it if it happens, I will gladly be. I'll gladly no, die. So in the here's fiery the thing. I love control. being right, but I don't really want to be right about this. I was right about COVID. There's a there's a there's a there's a. <laughs> you pretty good COVID. COVID? Right about. There's a clip of me January 26th, 2020 ish. Uh, it was when we were doing Stool Team 6 on TikTok, and we were walking to Dave & Buster's for a vlog, and it was like first maybe COVID case in the U.S., or maybe it was still in China, I don't know. And there's a video of me, and I was like, something about this COVID hits different. I was like, Ebola, Zika, I wasn't too scared about that. I was like, something about this coronavirus, it, it, it tickles me the wrong way. Well, if if this happens, you're gonna have to. Do I, how can I even prove that? But I'm how saying you're gonna have to do. I told right. you so by word of mouth. Yeah, I'm literally gonna have to not. I, like Feidelberg's so. my biggest uh, nice. opponent on this. I have yeah. to go yeah. fucking can the string. Yeah. Go to Feidelberg's apartment and literally just like show up and be like, I told you. Yeah. Like that. There. Yeah. So that's that's the downside. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, that's something that I think we should all be thinking about. Because I'm not going to think about it. The election is eight months away, and Trump time. is up in the polls. And the, fuck something's are, gonna the fuck is Trump or Biden going to do about the power grid? Exactly. Well, they don't want Trump to win, so they're going to shut down the power Who's grid. they? The deep state. Oh, my God. How <laughs> stupid are you? <laughs> The deep state, and they're and they're going to. He talks a lot of the deep state the last like. What, and they're the not, and they're and booting they're booting Biden out. Like don't worry, like Biden. I'm not saying Biden's deep state. Like they're about to probably replace him with Newsom or Michelle Obama. Yeah, I heard that for a long time. So, anyway, Mets say Cody Senga to miss portion of the season. Do you ever get like? I know you're a more optimistic Met fan. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll admit when Steve Cohen bought the Mets. And, you know, I was maybe I was a little bit afraid because all you guys were talking, we're going to every year, we're going to get the best free agent. The evil we're empire gonna, is back. Yeah, every year we're going we're gonna to be championship contenders. Mm-hmm. You guys are the same fucking pathetic franchise. His second year, third year, whatever it was last year, sold at the deadline, openly going into this season, are like, we're not even trying to compete. I was told that would never happen. I was told the Mets would be the Yankees where every year the expectation is a championship. This year, they're more or less openly being like, yeah, this isn't a contention window for us. Your, your best pitcher is probably going to be out for the season, at least for a decent amount of time. Are you ready to be like, all right, nothing has changed? I'm not, I'm not saying this as a Met hater. So, <laughs> yes, you are. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't defend this offseason. Like, even just today, like, Gio Urshela, who's like a third baseman across $1.5 million, he would have helped the Mets. The Tigers went and got him. So, obviously, they just... They're not trying this year. It's just frustrating to someone who buys tickets. I want to go see the best product possible. The Senga news is horrific. He's probably going to miss the first half. They already ruled him out for opening day. And spring training hasn't even started yet. This is a nightmare, a nightmare situation. Um, I'm hoping next year they spend money again. Um, they are spending, I shouldn't say it, they are spending money. The problem is all the guys they're spending money on are no longer with the team. Verlander, Scherzer, etc. They haven't re-signed Alonzo. They haven't re-signed Alonzo. No, they're not going to. They're going to trade him for a single-A prospect. Yeah. Who's uh, maybe past considerations? I do have new, I do have faith in the new GM, but I will say this is very disappointing. I'm very disappointed. I think okay. that this that, that this injury has exposed a little bit of fraudulence in Frank the Tank. Go on. How? I think that this has exposed a little bit of fraudulence in Frank the Tank because expound on that. All of last year, we heard nothing but the Mets are going to go 0 in 162. The Mets are going to be in last place for the next 10 years. And then something like this happens, and he's absolutely furious, dumbfounded, dare I say apoplectic about this. If he knew that they were going to go 0 and 162, why would this be a surprise at all? At what point can he lean back and say, I told you so, rather than having a conniption every time something bad happens? Can I defend my friend? Please. Let's say Tommy's right about the power grid. Tommy will have known the power grid go down, but he's still going to be really upset about it. still be fucking pissed about it. But Frank is saying, I'm positive they're going to go 0 and 162. He's saying, I'm afraid that this power grid stuff is going to I think Frank's afraid. This is what Frank... But he doesn't say that. He's not, I'm afraid it's going to be go bad. He's like, I'm sure it's going to go bad. Well, if you're sure and you're correct, then at least be smug about being right. But, uh, no, I think he, it, it, no, it shows you how much he cares about the Mets. No, because he's, he's, he's still hopeful. He still has Right, a that shows you how much down. he cares. Right, as a fan. He doesn't act like he has hope. He acts like he has no hope. And, but deep down, that's belying how, how he truly feels. Oh, he has hope. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes. But he acts like he has no hope. Oh, I think he, you got to read between the lines. I think he does. Yeah, but I, there's doom and gloom. I don't think it's reading between the lines. I think there's disingenuity. Oh, I don't know. I think it's almost I like it a, a thing where, like, he, wake, he, he wakes up every morning with a little bit of hope, and then by the end of the day, it's squeezed out of him. Yeah. He goes to bed, he wakes up, he's like, all right, maybe a little bit of hope, it's squeezed out <laughs> well, of him. I think goes he, to bed, a little bit of hope, squeezed out of him throughout the day. It's, all, like, it's almost like 50 first dates. Like, he wakes up every day, like, I don't even remember. <laughs> it's like a reset? Yeah, I don't remember all the bad stuff. Like, uh, maybe a little bit of hope, and then boom. Boom. But I boom. wish he would express his hope. I wish he was like, I hope oh, the Mets. It's out by 8:30 a.m. Well, I'm saying, well, maybe we need to fucking get a camera next <laughs> yeah. to his bed for when he's. I mean, I didn't up. Frank wakes up chipper. <laughs> Today's gonna be an amazing <laughs> day. Stub the fuck out of his tub. <laughs> yeah. The Mets are gonna. The Mets are gonna sign. You know, Pete Alonso yeah. to an extension today. <laughs> Today's gonna be amazing. At what point does Frank get to congratulate Frank for being right? Oh, he does that a lot. Yeah. Oh, he's. Oh, he, he'll tell you how often he's right. But then why would he be mad then? I don't think being right equates being happy. The two separate things. Maybe, maybe. Uh, let's talk some NFL mock draft. Daniel Jeremiah and his. Dude, big I've been board. grinding tape. 
You do watch tape? I grind tape. Actually? I watch not only highlight tapes, but I find full game tapes of anyone that I can. Do you do it for because of the NFL draft show or for? I passion? already was doing it. That's why we started the NFL draft show. Me and Stephen Che were like, let's do a show. I did it one year. I, I think my senior year of high school, I was like, I created this like formula and like this Excel spreadsheet where it's like, I'm going to give this guy these many points for this. Grading it? <laughs> yeah, and I Rating like I gave every everyone a, a grade. Watched a lot of tape, and then I was like, I don't fucking know anything. <laughs> like, who am I to like, like a guy's mental toughness? I'm fucking putting on an Expel spread or his route running. Yeah, I, uh, you should pull that up now and see like how right or wrong. Yeah, where you were. Right. No, honestly, I, I nailed. Who did I? Na- uh, Aaron Donald. I was all over. It feels and great to right. nail someone. Pretty good. Yeah. Feels I was. I will say, I was very high on Teddy Bridgewater. Um, all right. Let me see if I can. I mean, he was great at, at Louisville. Oh, yeah. But like, it wasn't too dissimilar from you know expert rankings. Well, then you're yeah, because an expert. Look at you. Because by, I mean, the deeper you go in mock draft season, the more streamlined everybody's mock drafts, and like you get to a consensus. Like I think that there's even more of a purity to like early on mock draft season because people have their own opinions rather than being like, no, this is a first round guy. This is a first yeah. round guy. Oh, this is a first round guy. Here and it is. Sh- Color coded for I think tiers maybe. Oh, you know who I real? So I, my quarterback. Yeah, rankings. read us your whole top tier. Or give us so a, let, let me. A do you want overall rankings or quarterback? Sure. Give oh. us your top ten from that year. All right. Let me find big board 2014. <laughs> <laughs> number one, Jadavion Clowney. You know that he was went number much one. A consensus. Yep. He had a 97 grade. Oh wow. Number two, I had Sammy Watkins with a 95 grade. Jake Matthews with a 95 grade. Ooh, Khalil Mack. I had number four. All right. That was that's something. Where did he go in the? Re- I don't remember. Oh, you had a little Mac behind Sammy Watkins? And I had Aaron Donald five. That's two guys in the top five that, that got taken out of the top five. Pull up the 20 Aaron points. Donald was 14, I'm pretty sure. I think he 14. was actually 13. He was a pick after the Giants took Odell. Khalil Mack was uh, lower than you had. Yep, nailed it. Yeah, Khalil Mack got taken. And you didn't yeah. buy you didn't buy the Blake Bortles type then. Oh, <laughs> not this guy. Where did where'd I have Blake Bortles? And I love Blake Bortles as a guy. Where'd you have Lawan? I had Lawan. Was that 26? 26? Oh, oh the oh, damn, what do you that's get taken fucked up. 11th. 11th. Well, <laughs> you're an asshole. Yeah. I had, oh, I love this guy. Or, or Dirkees Denard, the cornerback yes. out of Michigan yes. State. Yes. Greg Robinson. CJ Mosley, I had at eight. He's had a pretty nice career. From Alabama? Yeah. yeah. He got taken 17th value. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater, nine. Did you show this list to, was it Brian's mom? Did she have any input? What? In high school. Weird call. That's not a weird. No, it's a fair callback. <laughs> no, I did not show it to Brian's. Darquise Denard was a guy. You, know, you get caught up in a good name. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You get, people you like this guy's the next Darrell Revis. If you see a really it's good. It's hard name. to. Oh, you know, I re- oh, this was a Dix this was a miss. Name. I really liked Jordan Matthews out of Vanderbilt, wide receiver. Um, Eric Ebron, I had twelve. I mean, look, I nailed Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald, and that's really the story here. Mm. Yes, that's the that's the full story. The quarter, oh, you know who I like? You know, I had as my fourth best quarterback. I was all over this guy. Thought he was the next Russell Wilson. Taj Boyd out of Clemson, drafted by the Jets, I think. Great guy. Was he? Great guy. I don't remember him yeah. at all. We did a uh, like we did like a travel video with him at Clemson or something like that. Caleb, that that Clemson team was bigger than the sum of its parts. Sammy Watkins. Him. They were awesome. It was it was uh, Deshaun Watson or De- uh, Hopkins? He, was it DeAndre Hopkins. I think Hopkins team? was there, yeah. But or I think they had one year together, but that wasn't like that team. Bartavis Bryant, I think, was in that receiver room too. They had a good ass receiver room. And then I, I wrote little. I wrote little. Is there a guy you want to hear like my my overall take on? Let's see. Did you like, have a take on Lawan? I don't know if I did. Uh, let's see. Player. I don't know if I did offensive lineman. Oh, I did. <laughs> Hold on, it's hard to read. I gotta, cause this is fucking tiny. Color coded. I mean, um, I'd love to know what you thought about Lawan. Tommy Scouts. Just shake it more. That'll help. I'm, I'm shifting the fucking. Screen. He wrote it on an etch a sketch. No, no, it's, <laughs> it might erase it. You shake it so much. Uh, he's a rare athlete for his size. <laughs> he's very quick in his long arms. He's also got plenty of experience at college. He's solid in both the pass and the run, but is a better run blocker. He's a finesse guy. Like, what What the fuck does that even mean? Being a finesse offensive tackle is so funny. <laughs> like, the most violent position. Like, oh. yeah, I don't know what the fuck I was talking about at all. Um, but, yeah, that was my scouting report on Taylor Lawan. Who do you guys like in this draft? Are there? Do you, you guys have like a guy? Who, I haven't. I haven't. Really good. Enough tape. Well, this mock draft. There's two things that are interesting. 
A, four quarterbacks taken, and then none of them taken by the Patriots, which it seems to be some talk the Patriots might go after like a Kirk Cousins or like a more veteran type situation there at quarterback. That would be interesting. Which would be interesting. I uh, I I like Jaden Daniels. I would I love the idea of the Giants getting him. Like I feel like sometimes we so we're giving up on DJ. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm DJ's done. chalked. Uh, I feel like sometimes we almost like overlook college production, where like I feel like almost Patrick Mahomes is an example of that. Like he put up insane numbers at Texas Tech, and I get they have like a system that's designed for quarterback. Like at the end of the day, Jaden Daniels put up fucking insane numbers this year. Like playing against you know SEC incredible defenses. competition. Yeah, like that, you can't just discount that. And I think that uh, Drake May and Caleb Williams had almost already been anointed at that point. Yeah. I, like, I don't, I'd put Jaden Daniels do a lot above to, Drake May, and I'm basing that on absolutely nothing. I, I, I might be in the same boat as you. That's a nice and exciting take to make, for sure. Yeah. I think very exciting. Who, who, who from the tape that you've gnawed, who do you like? Uh, I mean, I was just grinding Joe Alt and... Uh, uh, Fashan Yu from, uh, from Penn State. I think that they got that right in the order of those. I mean, I think that they both, I mean, Joe Alt, he's more well-rounded, but Fashan Yu has a nice, uh, I'm probably saying his name wrong, anchor as well, great anchor. But I think that the differentiator between the two of them was when they, they both played Ohio State. I like to see a common opponent. And 44, the defensive end from Ohio State, he's incredible. He, Joe Walt neutralized him, mm-hmm. and he had some really nice plays against Penn State. So it's like, okay, similar sample size going right. against a common opponent. I think Joe Walt has. That's, that's front office level thinking. That's front office. I'm fucking. Ro- uh, I will say I watched three college football games this year, and Romeo Adunze was in two of them, and I, think I thought Rome. he was good. I think his name's just Rome. Oh, is it Rome? Oh. Rome. Not oh, Romeo, Romeo. Romeo. Adunze. Oh, the Jets, Ro- I, I guarantee. It's Rome Adunze. Well, whatever it is, he was good from what I saw, from the from the games I watched, which the Jets was will the semifinals and the championship. Absolutely, take an offensive line. That is, yeah, the guaranteed. Jets will absolutely. I think that uh, this draft class has great receivers. I think we're. So everybody, that's what, yeah, it was saying. We're gonna like over, uh, rewrite the receiving cores in the in the uh, in the I think league. Think like 04 QB level. I think so. I think that we're about to have a fucking bunch of studs. Who's 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 your top five? I like these guys. There's a dude uh, from, like, fucking Western Kentucky or some shit that's going to go in the third round. Who the fuck? What is this dude's There's name? some guys here. Yes, Malachi Corley. He's the next Debo Samuel. This oh. dude is a fucking stud. Or he's creeping up. What, they have him in the second round right now? <laughs> yeah, Malachi Corley is going to be fucking insane, dude. Oh, he's, that's uh, good. We should get that to the fucking front offices. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, well, he's already yeah. he's creeping up right now. I mean, I think he could be a second round, second round type of guy. Malachi Corley, beast. Oh, Xavier Worthy, I think. Didn't he score a punt return touchdown? Yeah, we were at the Texas game for the Pink Whitney Tour. Uh, so he's good. Uh, Young Coleman, good too. I, mean, I like the name Jalen Polk. Oh, he's on Washington. Yeah, maybe I just know that name, and that's why I like it. The dude from – where's the other Michigan receiver? And then I don't see – Roman uh, Wilson? Lad McConkey. like a lot of people have Lad McConkey as like a borderline first-round guy. Javon Baker sounds like a good name. 6'1", 208, good measurements. <laughs> Some hard-hitting uh, insight here from you. I like, <laughs> yeah, I like wide receivers you can almost always predict. By Sometimes me. it's fun to uh, just look at them. Jamar measures. Chase, like obviously Jamar Chase is going to be a fucking superstar. Yeah. A name like that. Roman Wilson, yeah, I think he could be a beast too. But yeah, I mean, just time to grind tape. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna, you've got to try and grind as much tape as possible. You're waking up at 7 a.m. every morning. you got to fit that in. I throw it on the fucking YouTube on TV while I'm playing with the dog. It's fun. Uh, are you writing it down? Are you like writing down notes or mental notes? Mental. It's all mental. Got it. You know who does a great job of that? Uh, Blutman. Well, yeah, he's like a huge college football guy. But also specifically draft. He grinds tape and has fun facts in his mock drafts. Hmm. I love that. Senior draft analyst at Barstool Sports. Yeah, it's Che. That's right. Che was demoted. He's super I know, but it's Stephen Che. Stephen Che is still at the desk. I mean, once he once he gets the desk on the show. True. Yeah, NFL draft show. Uh, Not officially confirmed back. Yeah, confirmed back. It'll be on the night of the draft. We'll be we'll be live. It'll be me, Brandon Walker, Stephen Che, and Will Compton at the desk. Wow. Check for that. I will. I will. I'll check for it. Uh, we got four biopics featuring every member. Of, did I say that wrong? No. 
Okay, biopic. I, some people say biopic. Yes, I and I think I okay used to say it. that, and I used to get corrected, and then I forget which one's right. But okay, four biopics featuring every member of the Beatles for a BCU, Be Beatles Cinematic Universe, is in the works. Uh, they've all uh, signed off on it, families. Uh, Sam Mendes is going to be the director, and it's going to be, from what I've heard, or it says here, but like someone else said, that it's all going to be like individual feature films, but they're all set around the same event. I don't know if that's the case, I, but it's going to be different points of view. So it's going to be like you might see it from Ringo's point of view and then see the same thing right. from George's point like of view. Right. Like, maybe it was Robbie that said this. I th but, like, it's that all, f it's going to be like the end of every movie is like the same event. Maybe it's a concert or whatever. But it's like you get the four different perspective points yeah. of view of like how they got there. And there's different movies there. coming out in different years. Same no, it's year. all the same year. I'm am for this. I love Sam Mendes. I like this idea. Uh, he also directed the most beautiful film ever, Road to Perdition, which is just amazing looking film. Um, I, and I, I, 1917 was incredible. I'm really yes, excited for really this. Pretty movie. It's going to depend on casting. So I hope they cast unknowns because I think trying to have someone we already know and have baggage with Agreed. as like Paul McCartney would be a mistake. Like Superman. A little bit, yeah. We're okay. just so familiar with those. How's better that? to cast a unknown. better to cast an unknown person as Superman because otherwise you're thinking like, oh, it's so and so playing Superman. It's like, no, that's fucking Superman. I think they, when there's an existing... Christopher Reeve, they, when they cast him, he's an unknown, and it worked really well for that reason. I think any time there's, like, an existing character that we know of, it's better to have... I think that person. more in, if it's a real person. Like uh, the Freddie Mercury movie, when they cast that fuckstick dude as Freddie Mercury. Who am I talking about that played Freddie Mercury? The kid from uh, iRobot. Rami Malek. Yes. Yes. That kid's a fuckstick. I thought he was a good actor. He's a fuckstick. Okay. Have you ever seen The Pacific? No. He ru he takes you out of every single scene because huh. he's over he's the biggest he's over actor in Hollywood. He's a fuck stick and I can't like I can't wow. laugh with it. So he's a maybe small part in Oppenheimer. Yeah, I just said that. And he probably oh, and, oh, I'm sorry. He's a fuck stick. But so is the same person that plays Ringo Starr going to be Ringo Starr in John Lennon's movie? Okay. Yes. And yes. Is, so okay. So like a Marvel movie but uh, the Beatles. Yep. Right. Cool. I like it. Cool. I'm excited and they're going to have a full license to use all the music too. So we're gonna get the actual songs and. Are you a big Beatles guy? I love the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. Best. What's your best five Beatles songs? Oof. Um. Yellow Submarine, Strawberry no. Fields. No. I would say our personal favorites. Um, Let It Be. It's a tough question. I like my life. Lovely, Lovely Rita is a great underrated Beatles song. Really. Uh, I I love the, the back end of Sgt. Pepper. I mean, okay. Help's incredible. Um, I like my life. I don't know what I don't know the Beatles. That uh, in my life, in well, my life, yeah. Or, yeah, it's a great song. That's a great one. Come together. Eh. Really? Yeah. I in the Walrus is a fun song. Some people hate it. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, you're on your 25 milligrams of weed gummy every night, <laughs> fucking hanging upside down in a walk-in closet. I will say there was one time where, like, and I talked about this, like when when I take an edible or something, like I just zone in on something, and it's like that topic becomes the most important thing in the you're world like, for me. And one night it was the Beatles. One night it was like, the Beatles. I have to learn everything about the Beatles, like watching YouTube videos. And I woke up in the morning and said, like, I don't care. Did you much. retain anything? No. Uh, just, just really what I focused on is that, like, you know, uh, you listen to the Beatles now, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, it's good, right? But, like, I think you have to contextualize, like, because since then there's a lot of copycats and they brought this sound to music. So it doesn't sound like that revolutionary, but at the time it was revolutionary. Like at the yeah. time people weren't really doing shit like that. So that's why it was so special. Now, if, if the Beatles came out today, I don't think they would be the sensation they were. But when the historic, when you consider the historical context, well, you know what? Well, music would be that? different today if they never existed though. Right, but I, whatever, I'm just saying hypothetically. And like, if the music was exactly the same today and the Beatles burst onto the scene as a band, I think they'd be successful. They wouldn't be the worldwide phenomenon. Well, look at their, their thing about the Beatles. Like, in 1964, they have Love Me Do, which is a pretty simple... Love, Love Me Do. Yeah, pretty simple song. They sang that in a school play. And by the end, you know, you have Abbey Road. And that's only a matter of six years. That's crazy. That, like, music changed that much and they were on the forefront of it. It's pretty wild. Yeah, it's impressive. Who do you think wins in a fight? George Harrison or James Harrison? <laughs> Probably James. Well, Harrison. George Harrison. Harrison point, the Beatles wouldn't be as big today. Yeah, it's true. It's true. George Harrison almost di uh, died from lung cancer, but before that, he got stabbed by a Someone crazy. broke into his house. And his, and his wife, wife saved with him. With a lamp. Because she swung through. She yeah. had the thoughts in, I, I watched the movie. Pretty crazy. Right? She had the thoughts in her head of her dad saying, like, if you're ever, like, swinging a baseball bat, make sure you follow through. And that's all. That really? Oh, I didn't know that part of it. She fucking followed through and fucking felled the intruder. With a lamp? With a lamp. Yeah. And then, uh, sadly, a year later, he died. Yeah. Can't escape fate. 
or the power grid shut down. President, dog's, President Biden's dog bitten a Secret Service agent 24 times in a 10-month span, which is crazy. The other one was removed from the White House, Major, but now Commander is also being removed from the White House. Yeah, these are, I, I know that we say, I mean, no such thing as bad dogs, only bad owners. Hmm. Yeah, you wonder, are they, these dogs being neglected? Like, what's, what's why these dogs? I would dogs... imagine they're, like, it's probably a stressful life, being yeah. the, the first dogs. A lot of intensity around them all the time. Yeah. People coming in and out, different strangers, but, like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of presidents have had dogs and they haven't been this, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I, I definitely follow that line of it's definitely the owner's fault, clearly. Yeah. But you, what do you think, that it, he's taking any responsibility for the dog? Like you think he's picking up the dog shit while he's shitting? No, him? they oh, definitely yeah. have a full person on staff. That's yeah. what I mean, it's like there's, there's gotta be some, like if you can, if you're the president, you could have fucking Caesar Milan living in the White House training your dog. Like, how is this happening? I, yeah, I, that's, that's what I'm confused about, too. Like, how, how do they let this happen? Even from a public relations perspective, you want to have the best people for that alone, even if you don't care about the dog. You I just don't want shit like this coming out. Can you guys think, I mean, uh, this is a president who, no matter wh what your political affiliation are, pe people fucking hate this dude. And so I feel like that's going to trickle down to, like, them hating his dog, them hating everything about him. You know? I don't think people hate Biden as much as they're, like, yeah, pity him. Yeah. I think they're all like, disgusted by him. Yeah. And it's like a reflection. It's like there's not a bad country, there's a bad president. The same way there's not a bad dog, there's a bad owner. You know what I mean? It's like he's a bad reflection. Nobody wants him. I don't hate our country. I hate our government. I love our country. <laughs> That's right. I just think he's a, yeah, a, a ter nobody wants him as their representation. They're like, yeah. I, he doesn't represent me. Well, it's going to be 86 if he, if he wins election by the he's end of that get 86 term. for sure. He's not running again. Restaurant terms. Come on. Um... <laughs> After show, <laughs> Clemmer, solitary confinement coming up soon. Yes, uh, March 4th to 8th for 100 hours. I will be in solitary confinement, uh, so windowless room. Like playing game Monopoly with people? No, or? I won't be. I, I'll have... Um, I'll, you should be, have zero human contact. There will be zero human contact. I'll have the rumble chat there. Um, but other than that, there's not going to be anyone in there. Wait, are you going to be reading the chat? Yes, I'll see the chat. Kind of human interaction? A little human contact. I, they, I said no. They wanted the what chat. They? Uh, production. They said it would be better. I, I said I no interaction at all, but they said um, they said the chat would be good. So I do think what could be good about that is the chat could fuck with him. Yes. Like because he's not going to know what time it is, so you have to make sure whatever you're reading the chat on doesn't have a, a time. Right. Clock. We've talked about that. It's more about like they could be like, oh, Clemmer, you're you're getting out in two hours. Well, I'm getting and meals. It's like, I'm getting meals, so I'm going to have a, yeah. some sort of idea. It's more like what's going on in the world. They could tell me anything happened. And right. Part of me is going to believe it. I'm not gonna have any idea what's happening. It's kind of funny world. wrinkle. It is a funny. Like wrinkle. they can tell me the power gets gonna shut down or shut down. I guess I wouldn't be there. Power's on. Feeling, I guess. Yeah. That's a bad example. I think that you should have limited. You shouldn't have chat the whole time. I think that you should. Yeah, maybe you like, get the chat for like a three hours. hours. I was told. I was told they wanted the, the chat. Who's they? Good. What is this? I in the sky? Fucking they. The people want the, the people. Who's the people? Chat. The people that I I have I had meetings about this and everything. Who? Uh, anyone in production? Stop saying production. <laughs> Who? Name uh, names. It was uh, Andrew was in that meeting. Jake Bass was in that meeting. Um, uh, trying to think who else was in there that would, would was talking. Oh, Cody Lanza was in that meeting. And they, so Andrew, Jake Bass, and Cody Lanza said, "You can't do it on your own. We're gonna have the chat." And no, they said the chat would be good. They, you know, they you know what I, you know what I would do is I'd ask Dave. I, I don't want to bother Dave a ton. Dave's You're just no giving chat. Tommy shit for not being his own man about fucking. I don't want to bother Dave because I have chat. I, I, so I, I think, I I think like, Dave. hey, Dave, here's this content idea doing. What do you think's better? I, like, I know we have to deal man. with Rumble. Is it better to use the chat, or do we think it's better content if I have no if I have no thing with the chat? Yeah, I, I could ask him that. That's fine. I guess I don't, I don't want to bother the guy. That's my whole thing. He's... Yeah, you don't want to bother your boss with a question about work. Well, I mean, <laughs> didn't you ask him about it already? I did. So I, I did have to ask him. I want to ask him just because. Yeah, consider him bothered. Well, he knows the tap. Well, he was here though. It helped, and I, I went through him. I said, "Hey, I have this idea. I want to make sure it's it's okay for you because there are also some health ramifications potentially. But I can leave whenever I want." But there's cockroaches down there for you to eat. Oh, and, there's and rats. rats. But I but I have seen no rat turds. I did see a cockroach corpse today, which. Oh. In the room. Yeah, we moved the chair, and it was under the chair. And I'm well. Like, so it could have been there a while. Yeah, which I don't know if that's better or worse. I'm much more scared of rats than cockroaches. Why? Why are you scared? Why are you not scared. Yeah. Uh, cre uh, I guess scared creep, is the right word. Out, I guess out. not like, but kind of scared, I guess. If they, like, remember that video of the homeless guy? They lifted up the 
blanket that he was where he was sleeping and a thousand oh, rats came God. out. Oh, if that was your situation oh. after a couple days, I know. I, the thought of that is, is making my skin. Yeah, um, I am worried about bringing in like because I'll have because it, it's more like prison. I mean, it's solitary confinement, but it's like a pri my whole thing is I want to try to replicate like what a sort of like what a prison. So I'm getting meals, plain like chicken and rice. But what happens? Is that going to attract rats? Like there, yes. hasn't, there hasn't been food in there. I mean, it is, it is on the second floor, correct? It's down below, right, but it's, it's down below, but the upstairs part down below. Right, so it's not like it's ground like one and a half level. Floor. No. Which helps. I mean, I will say that, so the back alley that we go through to walk to the shoe get, or the thing is filled with rats. Yeah. Like, disgusting amount of rats. And the dumpster's back there. Yeah. I mean, it's New York. So there's, there's rats, rats every right subway, there. There's millions of rats. Boy, there's rats, rats right there. You're gonna have to clean every morsel of food. That's why. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna have to be really careful with the food. Like you need to cl eat yeah. every fucking piece of food that yeah. comes in there. Well, can't you also there. then just like toss like toss it down the stairs? Like, are you gonna? Well, have I'm gonna have like a, a bucket, like a like a, a plastic bin. I'm gonna put the food in and then close up the lid. But I'm afraid even that will expose. Oh yeah, I think you should literally. I mean, that might then give rats on the first floor, but like that's toss it I, down the stairs. I might do that too. I mean, at the end of the day, and then Vibs can take out because Vibs is kind of like the eyes and ears. Vibs is like running this whole mental experiment. He's the saw. Yeah. And Vibs has like things I'm going to do to win potentially better food or uh, entertainment options, uh, like challenges I have to do. I love that. So, yeah. So. I think less chat. Uh, the, I, I think chat should be, you shouldn't have access to chat at all. Yeah, there should be like chat time every day. I don't know. I get it. We want to incorporate the audience. I think, I think it's funny that they the can chat. fuck with them. I think it's also good for like the rumble chat. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for that too. But I think. So that's I, one of the things I said. I think another reason to do the chat is they want to, you know, they want to. Rumble is important. And this is going to be, just to clarify, live stream for 100, 100 hours. 100 hours. Be Even when I'm sleeping, it's going to be live stream. So what is... Surprise? No. What is the... Um, I, I've always wanted to do this. You're sick. I like that. I, I've always wanted... I've always been interested. Like, how would I survive like Supermax was my, my original thing. And I said, I said this on Kirk's show. And I'm like, well, I guess they have radios in Supermax. I could listen to Colorado Rockies games. And I could like entertain myself that way. But then Kirk found out the radios were just like educational broadcasting. And I was an idiot for thinking I would play Rockies games. And I'm like, oh, you're probably right. That is we should get you an educational broadcast. We should give you like a tape recorder that has like fucking the uh, like I'm just a bill song or some shit like that. Schoolhouse Rock. I, 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 so what are you I, starting I, I, with? I what items mind. do you start with? Uh, baseball encyclopedia that goes to the year 2006. A notebook, a basketball hoop, and a Nerf basketball. Is it? What about a pen? A pen. I'm sorry. Yes, pens. Pens and notebooks. Yes. Because I'm also going to blog handwritten blogs too. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Yeah, I, I. So when's it happening? Uh, March fourth through eighth, uh, ten a.m. I go in on March fourth. Fourth through eighth. March eighth, I get out. Monday. Monday through Friday, and I get out uh, at two p.m. on the eighth. On the eighth, that's hundred hours. You have a will. Uh, I did it one time. All, all this stuff will go to my wife. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Not have that much stuff anyway. True. Then your ex-wives would get out anything. No, only one ex-wife. She would not get any. No, no, no. Uh, Sad for her. All right. Uh, and Barstool St. Patrick's Day merch is live in the store. Uh, a lot of really cool stuff. St. Pat, even even as an Italiano, a purebred Italiano, I can look at this stuff and I say, uh, "My culture is your costume." Their culture is my costume. Right. I'm saying as a yeah. as, as someone who's three eighths Irish. Yeah, I'm going to culturally appropriate on St. Patrick's Day and wear green because uh, we got yes. a lot of cool stuff. My so favorite is the property of XXL O'Malley. I think those are the best barstoolsports.com. Yeah, those are the best ones. Uh, anything else before we wrap? That's all I got. Adam? Love you guys. Fucking love you guys. New man. Son of a Boy Dad out today. Go listen. Of course, always. Uh, new Pat Bev, New Son of a Boy Dad. Um, I mean, but mostly support Clemmer Stream on Rumble on March 4th. Like, That's very nice. Thank set you. Set your calendars. Yes. 10 a.m. Yeah. March 4th. 10 a.m. See you guys on Monday.